In this video we will share our experience on the topic of stacking chests in Last Oasis, so that you can optimize the space you have for storage in your base. Hey all, we are back again with another Last Oasis video, showing you some of the many possible ways to stack chests in the game, and we will do that for all four chest types. Small, medium, large and gigantic. While we will mainly use the methods seen here for all chests, adjusting roof pieces downwards from the back, we will also show a second method that works particularly well with gigantic chests. While we have added chapters for each chest type, there is useful information throughout this video. And if you like it, do show us your support by subscribing and don't forget you can hit that bell to be notified of our future video updates. Let us start with medium chests and show you how we do this. Here we have lined up a couple of chests already and we're just going to quickly show you how far we are building out from the wall. As you can see and just to illustrate we have placed these further out overlapping the next foundation approximately like this. We have also noticed that if you need a wall on the end that a plain wall actually won't allow you to place chests as close to it as any of the other wall types. It's also important to notice that if you're going to have a wall on the edge, you have to place that wall first. If you start to angle down your ceiling pieces and placing them, then you won't be able to put a wall on the edge. So let's get going. So the first ceiling piece here, uh, with this placement in mind, you'll have to go nine down. And as mentioned, we're using light wood for our ceiling pieces. The correct placement generally is just behind the middle or slightly overlapping the middle of these chests. Let's just quickly place the second one as well before we place a second row of chests. If you accidentally manage to remove a chest, uh, normally it's possible to place it back where it was, but there's never a guarantee. So with the second row of chests in place, let's have another ceiling piece. And for this second ceiling, we're going to have to go six down for a perfect match. As you will most certainly notice yourself as well, uh, placing these chests when you have built the chests already, as in moving them, can be a little bit challenging uh, because your character keep going wiggling left, right. Um, if you build chests from scratch, fresh ones, you actually stand still and it's very easy to place perfect. But yeah, this surely can cause some frustration. There we go. So this is how easy it is to build three rows of medium chests. Finally, let's have a look at the numbers. Well, maybe a little bit confusing. To make our comparison, we try to estimate how many chests will fit into a space of one foundation in width and height. Medium chests pretty much allows us two chests per row and again with three rows we get a total of 144 slots per foundation. If your build allows for a chest to basically overlap that ceiling we are placed on top here, you have multiple options. For instance, you can place a large chest on top like this. If you stand on top while you place a chest, it will not overlap, as you can see here. Or you can make it easy, you can make a fourth row of a medium chest on top, like this. On the other hand, if you're planning for a proper second floor, uh, it's as easy to build as the first floor. You basically repeat the same process, nine down, six down, and the same placement, and you'll end up with a very nice wall of chest like this. Let us briefly look at small chests. We won't do the actual building here, but we'll show you our three solutions. You might think that nobody uses small chests, but actually they're not too bad. You can easily stack nine on a single foundation and on a one floor height. 
Let us quickly show you the angle of each roof piece that goes with each of these solutions. Here we have three similar versions. The main difference is how far out from the wall we go. And the first two here are closer to the back wall than what we do with most of our chest examples. For reference, while our foundations and walls are of medium wood, we prefer light wood roof pieces to support our chest stacking. In our experience, medium wood is not directly swappable, so should you attempt to use medium wood or any other building materials to support your chest stacking, this guide might not apply. As we're able to fit approximately 2.8 chests per row, and we have 3 rows, we'll get a total number of 134 slots per foundation in this case. However, how many slots a wall of chest will give you will depend on other factors, as for instance how long your wall is, if your build has a second floor, and more. On to large chests. So, with these chests being larger, we're gonna be able to build two rows without overlapping the ceiling, as if you wanna close this with a ceiling, you can only build two. With our placement, the first roof piece should be eight down, However, you can place the ceiling first and then build your third row, but then the chest will pop through the ceiling. In our experience, a good placement of the large chest is more or less like the medium chest, so you'll be overlapping that gap between the foundations, similar like the medium chest as seen here. And this second roof piece should be four down. If you accidentally manage to remove a chest, uh, normally it's possible to place it back where it was. Looking at our estimated numbers again, we believe you'll get about 1.66 chests per row. Uh, and there's three rows, making it a total of 159 slots per foundation. And of course, that is with three rows, which will overlap with the top ceiling. If you're looking to build two rows and contain it with a proper roof, you'll only get around 106 slots in total. And finally, we are gonna go gigantic with our chests. These beauties are slightly larger than the large. And as you will see, they are of a horrendous format. Again, our placement is approximately like the medium chests as you can see here and now to the challenge if we go nine down with our roof piece we will not be able to place a chest on top like we've been able to do with all the other chests what we have figured out though is that you are able to place one of these between each of the other chests. So you're getting a kind of hybrid solution. So you have two rows, it's within a ceiling height. And yeah, you will need at least two foundations, as you can see, to fit about five chests. And the ceiling piece still fits perfectly. In light of that, if we look at the numbers, we only fit about 1.25 chests per row. And with two rows, that gives us only 100 slots per foundation, which is actually the worst of all the solutions, even if these are the biggest chests available. So could we do this differently? Yeah, we can improve this building solution by using a different method than what we have shown you so far. Let's take a look at an alternative approach, which you can also use for all the chest types. It's not limited, but we found it particularly useful in the case of gigantic chests. This method requires a wall on the side, because instead of angling downwards a roof piece from the back, we'll be actually angling it down from that wall piece on the side. So let's go five down. Then we extend that roof piece with another roof piece, but that one we angle flat. 
Now with this in place, we can remove our initial roof piece. With that piece gone, we pull up another roof piece and we press the R button to toggle off snapping, meaning you manually placing this roof approximately where it would snap, but it's still part of your building and will pack up like everything else. With this in place, we can now go ahead and actually place three further chests on top of our existing chests. Looking at the numbers for this improved build, we now have one and a half chests per foundation. We still have two rows, so we're up in 120 total slots per foundation. That's still actually the worst performing solution out there, so, so in our experience, it's not worth using giant chests for stacking. It's okay to use them in hybrid solutions, as you maybe noticed in our medium chest build and also in our little warehouse, which we showed you earlier. Let's actually jump down and can show you that again where we have used them. Here we have three rows of medium chests where we then use the gigantic chests on top. And also in these middle areas we have gigantic chests on top of a double row of large chests. All of these can still be reached, although sometimes a little bit fiddly, while standing on the floor. If you are still with us, here are some final tips. If you're gonna move around a lot of chests, the best walker to have around is a spider because you can actually move three chests at a time. When you work on stacking chests, be really careful when you disassemble any of the roof pieces because if you should happen to take one off which supports a chest, the chest will be gone. The content will be in a bag, but yes, you'll lose the material for the chest. This is a rather large hybrid solution. Uh, in this case, the top chest does require a little bit of a jump to get to. This is an all over medium solution using medium roof pieces. We are not able to align it as well as with light, but it still works. And finally, don't forget you can create your own solutions. There is a multitude of hybrid solutions and potentially different type of placement, which probably will still work. That's all from us today. We hope you have enjoyed this video and we hope to see you again soon.